Hey everyone, and welcome to Throne Talk, home of Game of Thrones predictions, recaps, and more. Today I'll be breaking down some of my favorite minor characters that I'd like to see return for Season 5 and beyond. I know there's a lot of characters that could make this list, so I've only chosen characters who haven't gotten official confirmation on returning to the show. I'm also going to issue a small spoiler warning here, but you should be safe because I don't think I'm going to be going over any major happenings. Alright, let's get started. At number 10, Nymeria the Direwolf. Yes, I do have a soft spot for the Direwolves. We didn't see too much of Nymeria on the show, but she deserves some major street cred for attacking Joffrey and could have saved everyone a lot of trouble had she finished the job. After the attack, Arya sets her free, and not to spoil anything, but the wolf gets some pretty badass scenes in the books that I'd like to see play out on the show. I think I'm just down with anything that will give us more dire wolves on the show. At number 9 is Lord Yon Royce. In all honesty, I'm not too sure why I like this character so much. We saw him in only one episode last season, and he really didn't even do much of anything. I think it's probably a combination of the way he delivers his lines, and that his accent may be my favorite accent out of anyone on the show. Every time I watch his scenes, I find them to be hilarious for pretty much no good reason. Anyways, I really hope that next season Lord Royce will go with Littlefinger, Sansa, and Robin Aaron on their tour of the Vale. At number 8 is Great John Umber. You may remember this guy from one of the most epic moments on the show, when in the season 1 finale, he was the first person to proclaim Rob Stark the King in the North. The rest of the camp quickly followed his lead. The last we heard from the Great John was in season 2, when Rob sent him to battle the Lannisters in the Riverlands, causing him to miss out on the Red Wedding. To me, Umber is a bit like the northern version of Barristan Selmy. He's been fighting in wars for over 30 years, he's well respected by his colleagues, and he's somewhat the personification of the qualities of a northern man. Plus, just look at how badass the House Umber sigil is. The Great John's current status and location are unknown, and if alive, he remains one of the few Stark loyalists in Westeros. Number 7. Beric Dondarrion in Thoros of Myr Season 4 came and went without a single mention of these two and their brotherhood without banners. Given the amount of scenes they got in the previous seasons, it makes sense that the followers of the Lord of Light most likely have a part to play in the overall show arc moving forward, but whether we see them next season or not is still up in the air. If you saw my Battle of Ice and Fire video, you know that I think Red Priests are the most powerful magic wielders on the show, and that I'd like to see Thoros join the fight against the White Walkers. The last time we saw the Brotherhood, their main focus was acquiring gold to obtain better weapons and provisions for their cause. It's entirely possible that they could fight for Stannis or the Boltons in exchange for gold, though the Boltons would probably betray them or hang them for being traitors. Number 6 the Knight's King slash the White Walker Master. This one's a pretty interesting character just because there's a bit of controversy here. When HBO released their Season 4 Viewer's Guide, they named this character the Knight's King, who was a legendary figure from the lore who lived during the Age of Heroes thousands of years ago. The Knight's King was a man descending from one of the noble houses of the North, and was a former Lord Commander of the Knight's Watch who wed a White Walker and named her his queen. A popular theory is that Roose Bolton is a descendant of the Night's King, hence his cold nature, pale skin, and blue eyes. The controversy here is that HBO later redacted the character's name in their episode description, and instead labeled him as White Walker Master, which is way worse in my opinion. Anyways, given his distinct appearance, and his crown-like horns, I think we're supposed to understand that he is a leader amongst the walkers, and I hope to see more of him. Number 5, Walder Frey. 
The main reason I want to see Lord Frey back on the show is for revenge. This guy is deserving of a legendary death scene to come his way. I'm not sure how, but I don't think George R.R. R. Martin and the folks at HBO will disappoint. There's a story in the Game of Thrones lore about a man who violated the guest right, meaning he killed a guest under his roof, and in turn, the gods changed him into a rat only capable of eating his own young. Before we hated Walter Frey, he was actually a pretty funny character. I especially loved the scene where he couldn't remember the names of all of his daughters and granddaughters. For a minor character, I thought he was pretty well flushed out, and the actor who plays him recently said that he expects to be back on the show at some point, and that he thinks he will face severe repercussions for his actions. Number 4. Cyril Farrell I don't know why it should be so easily assumed that Cyril is dead. I like to think that since this is Game of Thrones, if a beloved character is going to die, why not show it on screen? He is the first sword of Bravos, which is supposedly one of the best swordsmen in Bravos, and is also the personal guardian of the ruler of Bravos, sort of like what the Hound was to Joffrey. We know he has skills, seeing how he took down four Lannister soldiers with a wooden stick, and the Hound later tells us that any boy with a sword could beat three Marintrants. With four Lannister soldiers down, why is it not possible that Sirio took one of their swords, and Marin realized that he was outmatched and fled? In the end, Sirio is probably dead, and Martin probably regrets not showing the death. My crackpot theory of the day is that Sirio Farrell was a faceless assassin, and he is now under the guise of Marin Trant. Number 3. Brynden Blackfish Tully this guy knows exactly the right moment when to get up to take a piss. The last time we saw Catelyn's uncle was when he heads to the restroom just before the whole egregious massacring thing starts at the Red Wedding. Later on, through a conversation between Roos Bolton and Walder Frey, we find out that the Blackfish had escaped the twins that night, and his current whereabouts are unknown. I like to think that he's hiding out somewhere planning his revenge on Walder and Roos. I do believe though that since he is such a mysterious character, he will come back to the show when we least expect it. I think he could end up crossing paths with Sansa and Littlefinger, or even the Brotherhood, though the latter would probably end poorly for him as based on previous encounters they would probably try to hostage him for gold. How cool would it be though if he's the one who finally saves Sansa? The Tully words are after all, family, duty, honor. Number two. Lady Olena Tyrell In my opinion, the Queen of Thorns was the best part of the King's Landing scenes in Season 3 and 4. All of her scenes are completely hilarious, and her one-liners and sex jokes rival that of Tyrion. I'm not sure if we'll see her again, as after Joffrey's funeral she returned to Highgarden, the seat of House Tyrell. She would be a welcome addition to the Season 5 cast if she returns, and hopefully through her, we can finally get some scenes in Highgarden. Number 1. Raccoon, Osha, and Shaggy Dog The youngest Stark child, everyone's favorite wildling, and the poorest named direwolf on the show, deserve a return to the screen. The last we saw of this group was in Season 3, when Bran ordered them to head to the last hearth to seek the protection of Morris Umber, the Great John's uncle. If Marcella Baratheon can return to the show in Season 5, why can't the youngest wolf? I don't know about you guys, but I spent the majority of Season 4 wondering where the hell Raccoon and Osha were, something not even book readers are 100% sure of. Osha was an awesome character, and she was to Bran's storyline what Bronn was to Tyrion's. The show certainly saw a lot of people losing interest in Bran's journey after she left. George R. R. Martin even admitted that Osha is one of his favorite characters on the show, mostly due to how fantastic Natalia Tina performed in the role. I actually favor the direwolves over the dragons, and given the small hints of Raccoon possibly harboring his own warging abilities, I really want to see more of this group, 
as I thought they were a glaring omission from season 4. Thanks for watching this episode of Throne Talk. Was I the only person who thought Lloyd Royce was awesome? Let me know in the comments which minor characters you guys loved and want to see back on the show. Next week's episode, I'll be going over the top locations in Westeros that we've yet to visit on the show. As always, leave your suggestions for what you'd like to see for future videos and hit subscribe for more Throne Talk.